Hello, welcome to Sips and Stories. My name is Elizabeth and in today's video I will be discussing my winter TBR. So after the holidays it can be a little difficult to stay motivated during these harsh cold winter months and one way that I do that is by saving a lot of my favorite books to read at this time of year. Everything from historical fiction to classics to cozy children's mysteries and everything in between. So grab your favorite beverage as I discuss my winter TBR. My first book on this list is one that I am so excited about. It is one that I actually got as a Christmas present from my brother, Matt. So thanks again, Matt. I love this book. It's wonderful. And that is The World's Most Beautiful Libraries by Massimo Listri. This book is exciting for me because it is actually a Tashin book or Tashin. And I love this publisher. They only publish really beautiful coffee table books and really, really fancy books of art and photography and travel and interior design. So I am so excited because this is my very first Tashin book and I love it. It's quite heavy too, so it's a little difficult to hold up. I will go ahead and show you some close-up shots because this is a stunning book about some of the most beautiful libraries throughout the world. A few of them I have visited in England, of course, but there are just so many more to see. Ones in Italy and Spain and Portugal, Prague, Vienna. I've just added so many places to my bucket list now thanks to this book. There's also a few here in America that I'd love to see in New York and even a few in Central and South America as well, such as places like Rio de Janeiro. So I love this book. It's gorgeous. And I do think that a lot of these libraries did inspire uh, the Beauty and the Beast library, for instance. I think those ones are in Eastern Europe, either in Prague or in Vienna. But I love this book so much and I'm so happy that I got it for Christmas. This next book is also a coffee table book and it is Marie Kondo's new book, uh, Karashi at Home, How to Organize Your Space and Achieve Your Ideal Life. So lately I have been obsessed with all things Japanese and Korean. I'm obsessed with those videos on YouTube of just Japanese and Korean women cooking and cleaning and just doing their daily routines. I love those videos. And when I saw this at the bookstore, I thought, yes, Marie Kondo is going to give me the secrets of how these women stay calm and centered, how they have these beautiful homes and this really balanced lifestyle, which is something that I am hoping to achieve in the year 2023. But I love Marie Kondo. I loved her first book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, which came out, what, about 10 years ago now? I remember when I read that book, I literally gave away almost half of the stuff that I owned, um, except books, as you can see, because books tend to spark joy for me. But I do love her philosophy about only keeping things in your home or in your workspace that bring you joy, that inspire just a love and appreciation. And I do think a lot of her concepts are based on the Japanese Shinto religion, where they believe that every object, everything has almost like a spirit of its own. And she does talk a lot about like thanking things in her house, like thanking her house, thanking her living room, thanking her shoes, thanking her bed and her sheets and her bathroom. So I love that about her. This book has some really beautiful photographs. And if you're like me and you just love, again, that Japanese minimalism, you will love this book because I'm just fascinated how they can take a single flower in a vase and put it on a coffee table and it's just enough. <laughs> and I hope that I can learn that this year. But she also talks about other things in addition to your workspace and your home space. She talks about how to organize your day, her morning routine, work routine, and evening routine. And since she started her business in America, she's since had a family and I think she has three kids now. So she talks about balancing that as well, that you just cannot be the perfect person and the perfect tidy person when you have kids. So she has acknowledged that. But I love this book, and if you're like me, you're just looking for something to help you set good intentions for the new year, you'll absolutely love this book. 
This next book is again one of my cherished folios and that is Love in a Cold Climate by Nancy Midford. Again, I will show you some close-up shots because I love these folios. They were both published in the 90s, The Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate. And these two books are some of my favorites in my entire folio collection. And again, I love Nancy Midford. I don't need to talk more about her. I've talked about her a lot in the past, including in my 2022 wrap up, where I talk about visiting Haywood Hill, the bookstore in London where she worked at. But of course, I have to continue reading more of Nancy Midford's books because I love her and I love her writing. Love in a Cold Climate is the second in the series. Both Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate are often published together, but I don't know really what it's about other than that it is more about the British aristocracy and just kind of making fun of her friends and giving them all these different names, but they're all loosely based on people that Nancy Midford knew in real life. I believe this one is about a debutante named Polly and Polly's mother is having her go to all of these balls and these parties and hoping that she will make a suitable match and she will meet a very wealthy rich man. And of course I do think Polly falls for the kind of bad guy in this book so I'm looking forward to this. I know that it's going to have Nancy Midford's signature sense of humor. And since it's called Love in a Cold Climate, of course I have to read it in the winter. Love this one, cannot wait to read it. Next up, I just wanted to mention one YA book briefly. I don't have the physical copy with me right now because it is on loan from the library. So I have the ebook and the audiobook on my phone. And that of course is The Winter Witch by Katherine Arden. This is the third and final book in the Winter Night Trilogy, and I have loved all of these books. So if you're like me and you're a fantasy lover and you love good writing and you love fairy tale retellings, but you're not necessarily a fan of YA, you still need to read these books. They're wonderful. Catherine Arden did live in Russia for several years. She's a Russian scholar. A lot of these books are based on Russian folklore and mythology and fairy tales. I love them. You're probably most familiar with her first book, The Bear and the Nightingale. So if you have not read that one yet, I highly recommend that you check it out. It's wonderful. It is about this young girl named Vasilisa who is raised in a very distant past in Russia, in this Russian village. And there are all these magical characters and spirits in the village that Vasilisa can communicate with including her horse. There is this very evil Catholic priest who comes to the village and it is his quest to stamp out all of the magic. And I love this book. She also has this on again, off again relationship with a frost spirit called Morosco. So Morosco is always giving her these weapons and these gifts. And I think there might be a relationship there. Not sure. Um, but I love these books so much. The second in the series, Girl in the Tower, was wonderful as well. That one is about Vasilisa going to Moscow. and She reconnects with her brother and her sister in Moscow. She dresses up as a boy so that she can fight. Loved it. And then, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what The Winter Witch is about. I just got it. I just downloaded it on my phone. So looking forward to reading it. I do hope that Vasilisa and Morosco get together, but we shall see. Also, if you wanna get into the series, starting with The Bear and the Nightingale, I do recommend looking into the audiobook. As someone who rarely listens to audiobooks, I do like this audiobook because it has all those correct Russian names and pronunciations, so it's very helpful. Um, and it's just really nice to kind of listen to it when you're doing other things. Love this series, and I love Catherine Arden's writing style. My next historical fiction pick is The Winter Sea by Susanna Kearsley. I love Susanna Kearsley. She is by far one of my favorite historical fiction writers. I read her book, Mariana, a couple years ago. I loved that book. And so I've been meaning to read more Susanna Kearsley since, and I just haven't. And a lot of my favorite booktubers have recommended other books by her as well. I think 
the rose garden. There's just a lot that she's done. And she usually writes these like time travel books. So that's what's happening in the Winter Sea. It is about a woman named Carrie, and Carrie is a writer, and she's working on this book about the Jacobite uprising, and she is staying in this cottage by this beautiful Scottish castle. And she's writing the book, but the book is just coming too easily to her, and she's wondering if that maybe she's remembering things from her past, or maybe it's a memory from a past life and it's just wonderful and it sounds a little kooky it sounds a little sci-fi but just the way that Susanna Kearsley writes it it's very warm and cozy and this is just the perfect bubble bath book it's the perfect book after work with a glass of wine or a cup of tea I just love her writing you really just sink into this one and of course it's set in Scotland and you know how much I love Scotland can't wait to finish this one this winter the next book on my winter TBR I picked up purely for aesthetic reasons and that is the Virago Modern Classics edition of Emily Climes by one of my favorite authors, Ellen Montgomery. So I have to say that most people are either an Anne person or an Emily person. I am definitely, definitely an Emily person. I just prefer the Emily of New Moon series to Anna Green Gables. I think Emily is a lot more introverted. She's more spiritual and she does seem to have more of a connection to nature, even than Anne Shirley. I think if you love Anna Green Gables and you wanna get into more by Ellen Montgomery, I highly recommend this series. And I have the entire series behind me here, but I just loved this new edition by Virago. I love that wintry cover of Emily walking through the winter woods. It's very Emily. And this one is probably my favorite in the series as well. It's basically Emily's high school years and it's very autobiographical as well. Emily is a budding author, so she talks about sending off stories and poems to magazines and rejection. And then she does get a big job offer at the end of the book. So it's a wonderful, wonderful story. And I do think it is loosely based on Ellen Montgomery's own experiences growing up as an aspiring writer. Speaking of children's classics, another one that I wanted to recommend for my winter TBR is The Wolves of Willoughby Chase by Joan Aiken. I especially love children's Victorian literature like Emily of New Moon, like Anna Green Gables, and I really, really enjoy The Secret Garden and A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And I think if you are a fan of those two books, you will adore The Wolves of Willoughby Chase. A lot of people think that Joan Aiken loved those books too and that this book is just her version of retelling those stories. I love it. It's part of a series, but this one is kind of a little bit different than the rest of the series. It's also everyone's favorite as well. It is about two cousins, Bonnie and Sylvia, and Bonnie in particular is very wealthy. She lives in a mansion with her very loving and doting parents, and Sylvia is an orphan, sort of, and she comes to live and stay with Bonnie and her family, but Bonnie's family goes off on this vacation. They leave Bonnie and Sylvia in the charge of the evil, Miss Slycarp and Miss Slycarp is basically Miss Minchin from A Little Princess and she ships the two girls off to this boarding school to this orphanage and again Little Princess vibes and then a young boy named Simon who is practically Dickon from The Secret Garden he helps the girls escape from this orphanage and they plan this daring escape across the countryside in the snow um, all these wolves are chasing them and it's just wonderful. It's delightful. If you like those two books, A Secret Garden, A Little Princess, this is a must read. I love it and it is perfect for the winter time. Another children's book that I am so excited to read this winter season is The Winter House Mysteries by Ben Gooterson. This is the third and final book in the Winter House trilogy. I especially love that first book, The Winter House, and I was so excited when I found an autographed copy of this third installment at one of my all-time favorite bookstores, Third Place Books. So when I saw the autographed copy there, it seemed like it was meant to be. 
there is Ben Gooderson's signature. And I love these books because Winter House really puts you in that wintry spirit. And it is not necessarily Christmassy. That's why I like it. It's just very wintry and cozy. And it's basically this five-star resort um, that has everything to do with wintertime. Skiing, sleigh rides, um, tobogganing, ice skating. And then the house itself, the hotel itself, just has a wonderful five-star restaurant, a bakery where the kids make candy, and then it has this gorgeous three-story library. So I love this book. I really love the atmosphere of this book. And it is about a little girl named Elizabeth Summers who is an orphan and her long lost grandfather, Northbridge Falls, invites her to stay with him at his house, the winter house. And while she's there, she ends up uncovering all these mysteries. She teams up with a little boy named Freddie. And it's just delightful. There are also a lot of puzzles in this book as well. So if you wanna challenge kids with word puzzles and pictograms and things like that, You'll love this one. I cannot wait to read this third and final book in the series. And the final book that I'd like to recommend for my winter TBR is Skating Shoes by Noel Stretfield. This is by far my favorite book in the shoe books series. And like many people, I had never heard of them before until I watched the movie you got mail and if you've seen that movie you know there is this very poignant heartwarming scene where Kathleen Kelly has just closed her bookstore and she goes to Fox Books she sits in the children's department and a customer comes up to her and asks her about the shoe books and she just goes into this like spiel about how wonderful they are and she says that skating shoes is out of print Do you have the shoe books? The shoe books? Who's the author? I don't know. My friend told me my daughter has to read the shoe books, so here I am. No Stretfield. No Stretfield wrote ballet shoes and skating shoes and theater shoes and dancing shoes and I'd start with ballet shoes first. It's my favorite. Although skating shoes is completely wonderful. And it's out of print. But thanks to Penguin Random House, they are not out of print anymore. And I agree with Kathleen Kelly. Skating Shoes is by far my personal favorite as well. Other books in the series include Ballet Shoes, Dancing Shoes, and Theater Shoes. And again, I love these new covers by Penguin. They're wonderful. There's also a lot more books in the shoe series. There's party shoes, there's movie shoes, circus shoes. Um, someday I'd like to collect them all. But what makes these books really special is they really highlight a unique period in history from maybe the 1930s to the 1950s. Noel Stretfield herself was a child performer. So all of these books are about child performers and theater and dance and skating and competition. And it just really describes this unique world of child performers. I love it so much. And this one in particular is my favorite. It is about two young girls, Harriet and Layla. And at the beginning of the book, Harriet is a middle-class girl and she is just recovering from an illness. So her mom signs her up for ice skating lessons. And once she goes to the ice rink, she makes good friends with Layla. And Layla is a very rich little girl and very beautiful. And she's won all of these ice skating competitions. She's really famous. They want to train her for more rigorous training. And so she can go to the Olympics and things like that. And as Harriet is discovering a passion for skating, even though she's an amateur, Layla wants to give it up. Layla is just frustrated by skating. She wants to be a normal child. And through this friendship, they both are just in this world of ice skating and ice skating competitions in the 1950s. So it's really a charming little book. I do think the movie Ice Princess, uh, starring Michelle Trachtenberg and Hayden Pantier, it does seem like that movie is based on this book. It has the exact same plot, except that movie is set in modern day America with modern day high school kids. Um, but it is the exact same plot. And I just love this one so much. It is delightful. Thank you everyone for joining me for my winter TBR. 
these are all the books that I'm reading this winter season. They're really helping me get through these cold, dark days. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, half the reason I sort of like the winter time is it gives me the perfect excuse to just stay inside all day with my tea and read all my favorite books. Thank you everyone and have a great day.